Well, folks, it's time to kick it old school. Uh, so you can feel cool. <laughs> Give it to me, baby. <laughs> baby. <laughs> yeah. Let's have a look at how the mainsail is attached to the mast. This is our fan dangle main head hoist locking car thingamy gadget. This thing is the bomb. Makes our life so easy. Yeah, I can't say anything other than it makes the sail hoisting a lot more precise in that when we hoist and go on lock, the head of the sail is in the same position every single time. That makes positioning the, the tack or the Cunningham end of the sail very easy. It also means when we're reefing, that the reefing line and everything goes into the same place every time. Uh, and we can adjust things and put marks on things and everything ends up in the same place each time. The mechanism for this, okay, we have a piece of elastic shock cord here that keeps our locking pawl here in the always out position so it will not lock unless this string is pulled. This string here then goes down the luff of the sail and keeps everything tidy and there's a couple of handles that come out of the sail that we pull at each reef point to lock this car into a position onto the mainsail track itself. So no load is actually ever held on the halyard. This is only just for lifting it up and pulling it down. No sailing load goes on here. All right, let's look at our cars. They're quite big cars. You'll see nice big grunty things. They need to be because it's a multi-hull and it produces butt tons of load. What we usually see a lot of the time is everyone will use these little tiny uh, 24 mil track things particularly with sliders and they jam guaranteed every time and everyone complains that their sails are hard to pull up and it's impossible to reef they can't reef downwind the uh, you know all the excuses come out nine times out of ten it's because this system here is not grunty enough this is a great big 26 mil fully bull bearing uh, jobby yes it did cost a lot of money but it was worth every single cent of it because we do not worry at all about the mainsail going up and down. Right, hydronet mainsail, not a fan. It'll never ever fall apart, but the shapes are starting to come out a little bit funny now. You know, we've done some miles on it. Um, would I go hydronet again? If I was going to go around the world downwind, yes, I would use hydronet. If I was looking at coastal cruising and uh, cruising where there's a fair bit of reaching and upwind involved, probably not. I'd probably go something that'll hold its shape longer than what the Hydronet does. But anyway, that's a, that's a fun argument Anna and I always have, but that's my two cents, I'm gonna get it in. <laughs> the battens that we use inside uh, are all SeaTac ones. Best thing ever. Um, they don't break. The weight is nice, but the fact that they don't break is, yeah, uh, let's dig it. We were even fortunate enough, we've got them here in the boom bag. There's a couple of spares. 
should never ever need them thank goodness but we do have spares in our boom bag pocket if the, for some reason I do something really stupid and I break a baton <laughs> Let's have a look at the front end. So here's my big grunty gooseneck. Through my big gooseneck comes my Cunningham. And my Cunningham is connected via Thai Alaska to the uh, tack of the sail. And here I got this fangly dangly thing here. And this is the trip line for my halyard lock. Now my car will not lock onto the mast unless I pull this. It will however if I lift the halyard a little bit it will unlock and it will not re-lock until I pull this line and further up there's actually a, a first reef and a second reef little one of these. So unless I pull this my uh, how you will not uh, my car will not lock onto the mast now this is a very important safety leech feature this is a pull to engage system this way if anything sort of fails or goes wrong it fails with the lock in the unlocked position because we've been in boats where it's a uh, pull to disengage and something goes wrong with the the pull rope or the spring in the car and you end up with a mainsail locked to the top of your mast and you can't get it down. When it's the other way around, if it doesn't work, you can still get the sail down and you can still essentially sail on the halyard even if it's a reduced size because uh, your halyards are generally smaller when you're running on locks. Our control lines, reefing lines, halyards, cunning hams and all of that come from the base of the mast straight across cockpit top to the clutch bank in the middle full access to it anything goes wrong well you can see it to replace any of these things is pretty easy the sail bag it's a sail bag that was made out of leftovers from recycling the 3di head saw because we had lots of material it wasn't the best material to in the world to do it with uh, it's suffering quite a lot with the uh, sun but you know it's a bag and it's working now the bag is actually a fairly important piece of the puzzle particularly when you're reefing having uh, good lazies and a good bag to catch and gather everything up during maneuvers uh, is fairly important and you'll see also our booms quite simple it's just an aluminium section with the reef lines that go around the boom this way we can move and adjust them as required etc etc it's not uh, permanently fixed if we ever put a new sail on it can be moved very easily also if we blow a reef line out for some reason or need to change it out for something else this is actually held onto the boom with a soft shackle so it goes around the boom with soft shackle on the end of the reefing line and that goes onto the actual reef line itself so super simple uh, very light and no metal parts can't mash too much my temporary permanent lazy jack solution i tied up one day with some rope and that's how it stayed for two and a half years looks really really horrible but <laughs> it works <laughs> is that my line has got a uh, spectra cover on it or a dyneema cover here's my third reef which is the red red one it goes uh, from that goldy red fleck to solid red and then let's see if we can find it then goes to a um, spectra covered tail now the spectra cover bit is super slippery so it helps to run through the friction ring and it's also very chafe resistant. So that means 
that my reef lines don't chafe out. Reef lines should not chafe out after a couple of hundred miles. They should be able to go thousands and thousands of miles. Um, and this is proof that, well, for us, you know, we've done 4,000 miles on these ones um, and still look like brand new. Um, case in point, when you've got the Imoka boats and all the rest of them, they actually use the same, a bunch of them use the same reefing system as this and they do 20,000 miles around the planet and they don't wear out. So no, it is not uh, normal to have your reefing lines wear out. If your re reefing lines are wearing out, you've got something set up wrong. The other thing you'll notice is I actually have it set up uh, on a soft shackle so that I can actually remove my reefing line at the sail end, okay? Um, but it's also very low profile so that I can wind this ring right down really close. But the reason I'm not winding it down really close is because I'm getting too much outhaul tension backwards. Uh, the angle is nearly 45 and it's too flat. It's This should be pointing basically to the masthead. Um, what that means is it pulls too tight on the foot of the sail. So my next modification to this is I get another friction ring and I put that friction ring here. So we go up around this ring in the sail, down through this second ring, which is attached to here and then back. Right, I was talking about this with uh, Nick on his channel that don't wind the living bejesus out of your second reef and your third reef and have the foot super, super flat because one, you'll the shape is rubbish and two you're going to stretch the living bejesus out of your sail and next time you go up to full hoist you'll have this stretched out piece in the middle of your sail um, Anna when she made this sail put extra reinforcings uh, across the foot of the sail here to help deal with um, that whole stretching thing in the foot as well so uh, most sail makers do it some I see don't. Uh, so your cheap uh, Rolly Tusker sails and things like that and your double cut, uh, your cross cut Dacrons don't have this sort of uh, Rios in your uh, reef points at the foot and they stretch as soon as you put a reef in. Um, so that's why you get, that's what you get from cheap sails. Cheap sails are cheap sails. Um, yeah, yeah, but the expensive ones are expensive ones. The expensive ones are expensive ones but they last a lot longer, so they end up cheaper after a couple of seasons. The other thing Anna did was, instead of webbings going into the sail, she's got a Dyneema um, strop that goes into the sail and that's all sewn in. It's just same thing, just different way of doing it. I got a little lashing here so my ring doesn't fall out. It stays open like that, it's not flash and fancy. The other reason I got the soft shackles on my reef here is you'll notice that I only had three reef lines but I have four reefs and the other reason for having these soft shackles is it saves me a bunch of reef lines and basically I use first or second reef for my fourth reef so I can actually unshackle it here with my soft shackle put it through fourth reef and then I can go from fourth reef to third reef and then if I want to go back to second reef, and I've used the second reef, while I'm in third reef, I can unshackle this and run it through my third reef because that's all down here because I'm in fourth reef. You go blah, 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 blah. It's, yeah, it gives me a lot, again, more flexibility and the ability to change my sail setups with the minimum amount of gear. We're going to go from full hoist down to second reef and we can show you the process of how our lock works, how it comes off the lock. So, look here, you see my figure eight uh, coiling of the rope here. 
so that it comes out without any twisting. So we're going to go around our winch. So you can see my red mark here has just taken up. So it was up here. It's come down to here. This is because we've actually got stretch in the halyard. You know, this is a high performance SK78 uh, halyard and it still stretches because it's got to go uh, up and down 22 meters, including the bits and pieces. So it's a lot of rope there. Less than 1% stretches, you know, you still get stretching halyards. All right, so I'm going to come up and off the lock. All right, so main sheet's off. Clutch is open, come down past my mark, should be off the lock, ease it down, and look at that, sail comes down. So that is the process of coming off the lock. Now on forward, so in the case of I need to put a reef in, I can put a reef in from in here. The only thing I have to go forward for on my system at the moment is that Cunningham. So the Cunningham clip that I showed you, I have to move it up one to the next Cunningham clip. And I can do that in a more convenient time. Yes, the sail looks really ugly uh, if I don't do it. If I was setting this boat up as a full short-handed sailing thing, um, I would actually have another bank of clutches and there would be essentially three Cunninghams, one for each reef, and then I could put in and take out uh, reefs 100% from here but because we are essentially a full crewed boat with uh, the kids and all the rest um, I can run the loose Cunningham thing so we're gonna go down and we're gonna go on the lock now this is another reason why I have to go forward at the moment if I want to go on the lock we have to go forward to the sail and pull the the trip line for the sail so we're going to go down to first reef. Here's my mark for first reef. So I've got to start easing the sail down to come down to first reef. Here comes my mark. Okay, so from this point here. Okay, Harry, you want to pull the trip line? Okay, coming down. On the lock. But yeah, so over the next couple of days, I'll be setting up the the reefing lines like I was saying before where instead of going through the ring and straight back I'll actually go up through the ring and back and then down and then back this helps um, not have so much aft pull on the foot of the sail because I'm getting too much at the moment and it's too flat yeah. So that's that's my uh, look at my reefing system.